Hey guys, it's the Beardy Red Viking. I hope you're all well. I'm back today with a review video for Damnation Festival 2022. It's a festival I've been looking forward to for a good six months or so. Uh, in fact, for longer, to be honest with you, since I saw it was announced. But I've been tickets for about six months. Obviously, been to a couple of other festivals during the year, so there was those I looked up forward to. But this was always in the back of my mind as something I was really excited about. I went to the first four Damnation Festivals. It started back in 2005 in Manchester at Jilly's Rock World. Uh, local club which has sadly since closed down it's now a tesco brilliant nice one we ain't got enough of them it's a, a festival that's quite close to my heart as i say went to the first four uh, first two were in manchester then it moved to leeds so it was 2005 2006 at jilly's then it moved to leeds metropolitan university students union in 2007 then it moved again in 2008 to leeds university students union where it had remained ever since I didn't get there again until 2011, which I went to with Olivia. That was the year I met Liv. We went together then. And uh, for one reason or another, money, difficulty getting there, not being able to get time off work, all sorts of reasons, I haven't been since. But this year it moved back to Manchester, well, Trafford Park. It moved to Bowlers Exhibition Centre. Uh, it's an arena, so basically it's grown so much over the years. It was at a club venue at the start, held no more than a few hundred people. Then it moved to a venue where maybe about a thousand uh, between the rooms at the first venue in Leeds. Then it moved again, and I think it, the capacity was about 3,000 there. And then it's moved here, and it's now a 6,000 capacity venue for an extreme metal festival. It's an arena sized extreme metal festival. The guys have done an absolutely incredible job. I saved up a few pennies for it. Saturday morning came, and we thought we were going to have to get buses there um, because the trains were all cancelled and stuff like that due to the strikes. Thankfully, we didn't end up having to do that. The strikes did get cancelled, but a load of people weren't able to make it to the festival because the train timetables were still following a strike timetable. So unfortunately, loads of people did miss out, which is a real shame. Hopefully that won't happen again next year. So we ended up leaving at about 10.30 in the morning. We thought we were going to have to leave at about 9am, so it was a bit of a bonus. Doors opened at 12, first band was on at 12.30ish, I think. We met up with a mate, we got a taxi to his place, and then we got a, got a lift from him because he was driving, so that worked out quite nicely. We got there, and um, this is the scene. In the queue. It's quite a long queue, but we're up front nearly. End of the road. We're in. Got the wristband and the forum pass, so we can get in the cantina bar. <laughs> so once we were inside, that's about all you're going to get in terms of vlogging content by the way i didn't manage to get a great deal done so the first band i saw was a band called frail they're a band from cleveland ohio female fronted atmospheric doom slash post metal band the vocalist her name's gwyn strong she's got a very gentle very delicate voice so it's quite a, a nice juxtaposition with the heaviness of the, the music. They actually describe themselves as making lullabies over chaos, which is quite fitting. Take a look, see what you think. <laughs> So next up was the first band of the day on the main stage who were Irist. Uh, they're another sort of post-metal kind of band from Atlanta, Georgia, same city and state as uh, Mastodon. And they do have a reasonable amount in common with Mastodon in terms of the sound. Bit of a Mastodon cross with Gajira kind of vibe, 
plenty of groove, but very heavy, very posty in places. Really enjoyed the set. It's the first time I've seen them. First time I've heard of them was when I saw them in the lineup for this. So I've done plenty of preparation listening to them in advance, as I had done with a few other bands. Um, but yeah, I really was looking forward to seeing them, and I really enjoyed the set. And next up was a band called Bruit. <laughs> Entirely sure exactly how he pronounced that, but it's actually French for noise. That's its literal translation in French. They are a French band, they're from Toulouse in France. Again, they make sort of post rock kind of stuff, but they are a blend of post rock and classical, like sort of modern classical. There's a guitarist, there's a bassist who spends half his time on the stand up bass or cello, and then there's a, another guy who plays violin. Um, so there's a lot of soundscapes, it's very atmospheric, it's very heavy, but it's also very melodic, beautiful, really good band. Next up on the main stage was Insanity Alert. They are a crossover thrash band who I had also not heard of prior to them being announced onto the bill of the festival. Uh, they're an Austrian crossover thrash band from Innsbruck in Austria. Uh, on their website, they describe themselves as an alpine thrash assault which is pretty accurate they've also got a mission statement which is to thrash hard smoke weed drink beer watch football skate once in a while again sums them up pretty nicely they were great fun definitely the most entertaining band of the day and um, just plenty of gang vocals they had placards of loads of their, their choruses what they just throw out into the crowd so people in the pit were just running around with these placards they had a song which was basically a cover of Iron Maiden's Run to the Hills, but they changed it to Run to the Pit. So it was Run to the Pit, Mosh for Your Life. Uh, again, they had placards. And someone that did Run to the Pit was Pikachu. <laughs> So yeah, that was one of the people on the uh, on the Facebook forum had bought a Pikachu inflatable outfit and went into the pit with it. Absolutely fantastic. So I got that footage from uh, a lady called Karen Kavanagh on the Facebook forum for the Damnation Festival. So thanks very much for that. It's a good community on there. If you uh, if you go to the festival, definitely recommend checking it out. If you don't, uh, get on there, have a look. You might get a bit of a vibe for the people. But I would say that video there and. That kind of behaviour, that people, that messing around, having a good laugh, that, that really sums up the spirit of the festival for me. Uh, that's kind of what Damnation is about. So it's a real community spirit. And um, yeah, it's a very loyal crowd. Obviously, it grows year by year, but uh, there's, there's always a very loyal core. As I say, I first went in 2005. I didn't miss a lot. Um, but there's people who go every year. And there's a real good vibe. And um, it's definitely worth making it if you can do if you're into your extreme metal so the next band i watched was stygian bow i believe is how you pronounce them it could be stygian bow 
but I'm going to go with Stygian Bow. I'm not 100% sure on that. But this is like a, a doom metal collaboration between Bellwitch, who were a doom band from Seattle, and Aerial Ruin, which is uh, an acoustic solo project uh, of a guy called Eric Mogridge. Um, he makes Dark Folk. He's from Portland, Oregon. Uh, they've joined forces together and they've made this album, Stygian Bow. It's almost funeral doom kind of tempo. It's very slow. Very long songs, lots of atmosphere, hauntingly beautiful melodies, strikingly heavy at times. It was a 45 minute set and they only managed to play three songs in that time. All the bands that played, I will be putting links in the description below. So uh, if there's any that you don't know, check them out. Next band on the main stage were Full of Hell. And these guys are fucking filth. <laughs> As you'd expect from a grindcore band, they're very fast, it's unrelenting, it's heavy as fuck. I did recently buy one of their albums, uh, you'll have seen it on my video if you watched it when I bought the uh, the music from 783punks.com, who incidentally was at the festival, had loads of stuff available for sale. But yeah, uh, Full of Hell, absolutely superb, really, really, really heavy, really fast, ferocious, disgusting in all the right ways. Next up was something quite different, which is a band called We Lost the Sea. They're another band that I hadn't heard of before they were announced for the festival. Uh, they're from Sydney, Australia. They're an instrumental, post-rock, post-metal band. Sort of cinematic soundscapes, I'd almost describe their songs as. Uh, they describe themselves as being fascinated by the universe and FX pedals, which, again, you can, you can see where they're coming from when you listen to their music and hear that. They actually played two sets over the weekend. There's two nights, Damnation on the Saturday, and they always have a pre-show the night before called Night of Salvation. And We Lost the Sea played there as well as the main festival. But the night before they played their most well-revered album, uh, Departure Songs, which unfortunately I missed. I had a listen to them um, for a month or two before the festival and I, I really got quite into them and I really hoped I'd be able to get to that show. but. I just didn't have the time, didn't have the cash, didn't have anyone who was able to go. Uh, I did enter a competition to win, uh, which I probably would have tried to make my way there if I dropped the ticket for free. Sadly, I didn't, but uh, it was a shame because I really enjoyed these guys. Uh, I think these were their two first shows in the UK. I may be wrong in saying that, but I believe they were. Uh, I definitely want to catch them again. The next band was Pig Destroyer on the main stage and uh, they don't just destroy pigs. They are every bit as heavy and disgustingly filthy as you might expect with a band with a name called Pig Destroyer. Legendary grindcore band, I'm sure you will probably have heard of them if you're into anything of that kind of ilk. They're from the US of A, in the, from the state of Virginia, and the set they played on Saturday at Damnation it included their classic album, Prowler in the Yard, in full, which I don't know if they've done that before, but it was certainly an event. Uh, it was superb. Definite highlight of the day. Uh, it was brutal, 
pummeling, grinding assault. And considering the brutality of the music that they make, the extremity of the music they make, the amount of people watching them was mad. As I say, it's a 6,000 capacity arena and it felt like everyone who was there was watching them. It was, the room was full. Next, I went to watch Wolves in the Throne Room. Yeah, you've probably heard of them as well. They're a pretty well known in the underground, a doomy sort of black metal band from Olympia, Washington in the US. They play, yeah, like I say, doomy kind of paced black metal. When I say doomy paced, obviously there's a lot of tremolo picking, it's black metal, but the vibe, the, the, it feels quite slow paced. There's lots of atmosphere and they even started burning sage through their set at one point. In fact, I say at one point, they were burning sage for most of the set. And that have got a little bit of mysticism about them, a little bit of something extra, something that makes them different. And Wolves in the Throne Room definitely do that. Uh, really enjoyed their set. And after that, I needed a break. The next band up on the main stage was My Dying Bride. And I've got to be honest with you, I've never been a fan. I love doom metal. I love all sorts of doom metal. I love doom death metal. I love loads of bands inspired by My Dying Bride, but they're just a band I have never been able to get into. I have tried, believe me, I've tried. I tried again shortly before the festival. I listened to Turn Loose the Swans. I listened to the most recent album. I listened to a couple of their other albums. I really gave them another good go and I just can't get into them. I don't like the guy's voice. I just, I don't know. One of them things, I love bands that were massively influenced by them, but I've just never been able to get into them. So I gave them a miss. The three stages, by the way, I haven't mentioned that previously. So there's the main stage with the big cavernous arena. Sound in there was not great if you were quite far back with it being a, an arena sized venue. The, the sound was kind of muddy in places. If you got further forward though, it sounded great. And the other two rooms, in my opinion, sounded superb. So this next band was in the, 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 the larger of the two rooms and it was Misery Index. A brutal, ferocious death metal band from Baltimore, Maryland in the USA. They were one of the best bands of the day. They were so brutal. Plenty of pummeling riffs, loads of awesome rhythms and there was so much groove to a lot of their stuff. They're a band I've heard of a long time ago and there was something about, I don't know if it was the name, I don't know if I got them mixed up with another band. I just never really paid a great deal of attention to them. Um, but when I saw they were on the list, uh, about six months back, I started giving them a listen and boy did I get into them. They are fucking brilliant. <laughs> of the day for me and it absolutely blew me away the riffs the the drumming just just, just the ferocity of it um i think one of the guys in misery index is also in pig destroyer so he had a heavy going time of it that afternoon they were superb they did stop the set briefly in the middle of it because someone had got hurt in the pit and i did see someone absolutely hammered knocking around the pit kicking off with security could have been the same guy i'm not sure it took security a while to get him out of there but yeah they, they didn't stop the set for too long they, they got back on with it but uh thought that was a nice touch looking out for the crowd well yeah wish i'd listened to them sooner they were they were up there for me as one of the one of the best bands next up on the main stage was godflesh and 
Again, I'm going to probably get a bit of stick for this, but I couldn't care less about Godflesh. Again, bands that they have influenced. I enjoy a bit of industrial. Uh, I, I'm aware they're legendary. I'm aware they're very well revered, very well regarded, but they just don't do it for me at all. Uh, so I didn't watch them. I had a bit of a break again. I went outside to try and get some food with the missus. That didn't work out because the queues were ridiculous. But yeah, I took that time to, uh, to get a bit of merch. So first up, I bought the official 2022 Damnation t-shirt. That's the official artwork for the festival this year. And that's the uh, the nice lineup on the back there. So Converge, Godflesh, Pig Destroyer, At the Gates, My Dying Bride, Wolves in the Throne Room, Decapitated, Misery Index, Despised Icon, Elder, Full of Hell, Paul Bearer, Incantation, Oceano, 40 Watt Sun, We Lost the Sea, Green Lung, Insanity Alert, Stygian Bow, So Hideous, Bruit, Distant, Frail, Iris, and there was supposed to be a, uh, a show by a group called Toki Horror who do some mental drum and bass type stuff. That was supposed to be the after show, but they ended up pulling out because of a band member getting injured at the last minute. So, yeah, that's the official artwork and then there's a guy called Jim Bob Isaac who did a load of artwork for the, the beer company um, that sponsored the show. It was uh, Holy Goat Brewing uh, but he's also done artwork for Clutch, Mastodon, loads of other bands. Awesome artwork as you can see. He does tattoos as well. He's got a great style and that's got uh, the band line up on the back as well. So pick that up. And then they also had some reprints for sale of uh, previous year's festivals. They had the 2005, 2008, 2011 festivals. Uh, they had the official t-shirts for those reprinted. So I picked up a couple of them and got the, uh, the 2005 one. So that was the first year when it was still at Jilly's. That's the official artwork. And that's the line up there, you can see. Main stage headliner, Raging Speedhorn. And on the, uh, the Terrorizer stage, the second stage, Entombed. What's that all about? But yeah, I was there for that. I watched Entombed. Don't mind a bit of Rage and Speedhorn, but if you're going to give me pick between Rage and Speedhorn and Entombed, I'm going to go with Entombed. It might have been staggered, actually. I might have seen a bit of both. I can't really remember. It was 17 years ago. Uh, but yeah, it was 6th. Garrotted, Charger, Got Worm, 4-Way Kill. The Inbreds, who were good fun. Conquest of Steel, Forever Never, Mercury Rain, Allergen, who's a band that my old band Insidium played a few gigs with. Well, quite a few gigs with back in back in the day, about 2007, 2008. Played quite a few gigs with them at the Satan's Hollow venue in Manchester. And then you've got a band called Nailed, who are a local death metal band as well. So it was on the 16th of October, 2005. And then I bought the 2008 festival t-shirts that was the first year at Leeds Student Union and that was headlined by Carcass that was uh, when Carcass had, uh, had just come back from their 10-15 year or so split and uh, it was also My Dying Bride Pitch Shifter didn't watch either of them Napalm Death watched them watched a bit of Cathedral Onslaught Sigh Benediction, Devil Sold His Soul, The Berserker, Taint, Ramesses, She's, She's, Desecration, Superb Band, Mountains Became Machines, Latitudes, and Red Mist. Carcass was superb. Psy, one of the bands of the day for me. Onslaught, I missed them. They were great, as you would have expected. Napalm Death, obviously, were brilliant. Uh, the Berserker, massively intense so yeah great bands great festival and i had to pick those up and because i spent a fortune on official merchandise for the festival i got a nice damnation tote bag to carry it all around in established 2005 and to top off the t-shirts i've already mentioned this one i bought a wolves in the throne room t-shirt yes believe it or not that Apparently says Wolves in the Throne Room. 
can't see it myself, but I am reliably informed that that's what it says. So it's the uh, black and white version of uh, the album cover from the album from last year, Primordial Arcana. It's got a little back print. So yeah, so those were the t-shirts. And then official merchandise was topped off by this Omens by Elder. So it's a five track LP, five track double LP. And it comes on sort of blue marbled effect of custom labels. It's a gatefold, as you would imagine, with it being a double LP. Those are the dudes. Awesome art. And you also get a nice 12 inch booklet as well. Again, the dudes on the front. And some recording studio pictures along with the lyrics. So yeah, really nice little package that. Really pleased to get hold of that. And then I went to see my mate Eddie over at the 783 Punks stall. He had his, uh, his distro there. So he was uh, selling plenty of awesome stuff. A bit overwhelming to be perfectly honest with you. Flicking through it all. To say I was wasted by this point. I'd looked at it previously earlier in the day and I was just like, I don't want to be carrying records around all day. So I went back towards the end. So the first thing I bought from Eddie was the uh, recent release by his own band, Herida Profund Power to the People. It's filthy, horrible grind. Anti fascist grind core. Got a nice slip mat with it. And again, it's a gatefold. And this is on splattered black and white vinyl, which looks really cool. This is uh, released on the 783 Punks label, as you can see on the back there. The, uh, the album cover on the insert and then the, the lyrics. And then he also had classic death metal album for a decent price. Napalm Death's Harmony Corruption. Had to pick that up. With a printed inner. And that's just on standard black vinyl with the Earache label. So that was all the music I purchased. But I did pick up a load of stickers from uh, from Eddie, so 783 Punks logo. A few stickers of his band. Or oh, anti fascist grindcore. Nazi metalheads, fuck off. 783 Punks against nationalism. Yep, yeah, so we've got a few stickers. And then. Also got the uh, the forum pass on the day, which gave me access to the cantina bar, as you can possibly see there, which was pretty awesome. They've got a little bar set up like the cantina on Tatooine from the first Star Wars film. Sadly, there wasn't any figuring down in the modal nodes playing their uh, their jizz in the corner. But yeah, it was a cool little venue for forum members. You yeah, paid an extra 10 quid, 15 quid, I think it was. You got a pass to go up there. Uh, it was a much smaller queue for the bar nicer toilets and somewhere you could sit down. I met up with uh, Mastodon Mark, who's on uh, on YouTube as well. Had a couple of beers with him. And I also finally picked up these. So I got a, a sticker from Brewit. And Jim Bob Isaac. 
one of his pieces of work on a nice shiny sticker. So yeah, that was my merchandise haul. The next band I did watch was Paul Bearer, who are immense. That's the quality of this show. Every single band, the superlatives I've had to describe pretty much every single band that played this festival. I'm not exaggerating. Every band was stellar. Every band is really, really, really good at what they do. Uh, they're at the top of the game. And uh, Gavin and Paul and the guys who booked this festival, they do a fucking brilliant job every single year. I've always wanted to go. Every year I've not made it. I've looked at the bill and I'm like, oh, I really need to go. But not always been able to make it, unfortunately. But it was good to get there again. So yeah, massive tangent there. I'll move on. Paul Bearer, they are a US doom band. They're from Arkansas in the US of A. Uh, slow, heavy, melodic, beautiful, plenty of melody. I've used a lot of these, these descriptive words to describe quite a few of these bands. I need to look a thesaurus up, I think. <laughs> blown away by these guys. I was starting to flag by this point. As I say, I'd taken a couple of breaks. The beers were starting to hit home. Although I was starting to, to struggle a little bit, they, they were magnificent. <laughs> I missed the first two songs of At The Gates. Yep, I missed Blinded by Fear. I missed the start of Slaughter of the Soul as well. I missed Go! Seen it before and I comforted myself with that knowledge. But yeah, I heard it going on as I was stuck at the bar being served, uh, picking up about three or four pints for mates and stuff. I thought I'd judged it perfectly. I hadn't. So yeah, missed the first four or five minutes of At The Gates, which is devastating because they're one of my favourite bands. Legendary death metalers from Gothenburg, Sweden, who I'm sure you're all familiar with. They were playing the Slaughter of the Soul album, their classic album in full. One of my favourite albums of all time. Uh, and they were incredible, as expected. <laughs> So yeah, they played the full album. They ended with Flames of the End, which I'll show you now. I'm right in saying that they only played one more song after they uh, they finished Slaughter of the Soul, but I might be wrong. I can't remember 100% because I'd had a lot of beer by this point in time. 
So, yeah, they were brilliant. Absolutely loved them, as I expected to. So the penultimate band of the day was Elder on the smaller stage again. Bit of a dilemma this one because Olivia really wanted to go and watch Decapitated, who were playing at the same time. And I really wanted to watch Decapitated too, because Decapitated are great. Elder were one of the main bands I wanted to watch. So we, we went our separate ways. Liv went off to watch Decapitated with a mate of ours, Loz, and me and Carl went and watched Elder. Elder are a genre pushing psychedelic heavy rock band. I think were probably the best way of describing them. They're originally from Massachusetts in America, but they recently, in the last few years, moved to Berlin. They recorded an album with Cadaver, a collaboration with Cadaver a few years back, and they've got another album coming out around about now. Great, hard rocking, melodic riffs, loads of atmospheric keyboards, awesome vocals, absolutely masterful band. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I did watch them because they were band of the day. They were absolutely transcendent. Pretty much everyone I've seen talking about them on the forums and whatnot afterwards has said the same thing. They were mind blowing. <laughs> So, last band of the day, Headliners Converge from Salem, Massachusetts in the US of A. Absolutely legendary hardcore band. Um, their guitarist Kurt Ballou is a prolific producer. If you don't know Converge's music, you'll probably know some of the albums he's produced. Uh, he's produced Isis, Converge Themselves, Old Man Gloom, Black Breath, Nails, Trap Them. Vel Attack and also Full of Hell and Misery Index, funnily enough, as well. Absolutely legendary band, fantastic band. I love their music, intense as fuck. They were absolutely great. They played their classic album, Jane Doe, in full. So that was a bit of a theme. They had four bands playing albums from front to back. They had uh, Converge as headliners. It was, they were supposed to be headlined by Ministry, but they pulled out a few weeks before. So what we did to replace them was get four of the biggest bands there to play their classic albums in full, which was a superb move. So Converge played Jane Doe, Pig Destroyer played Prowler in the Yard, Godflesh played Street Cleaner, and At The Gates played Slaughter The Soul in full. At The Gates were always gonna play Slaughter The Soul, but getting them three to, to do their classic albums as well, after Ministry had pulled out was was a real coup. And um, yeah, just fantastically run first of all the way through. But yeah, uh, Converge were fantastic, but Towards the end, at the end of their set, I, I didn't watch their encore. I was, I was ruined. Uh, I was absolutely knackered by that point. So I watched most of the set. Then I did a bit of walking about. Went and sat with Liv because she was uh, flagging by that point as well. Went outside to where the food vendors were, and then finally 
there was not much of a queue left because it was getting on for midnight by this point. Uh, but yeah, there wasn't much food left either. So we got some donuts and a few packs of bacon fries, good old bacon fries. Went inside, said goodbye to people who were there that we knew and we headed home. So yeah, what a day. Absolutely amazing. Considering it was the first year in a completely new setting, considering they doubled the capacity of the, the venue they were in compared to the venue they were in previously, it was handled magnificently. There were a few minor teething issues. It was a shame that, unfortunately, there was no signal whatsoever in the venue, so you couldn't get in touch with anyone. So, I, unfortunately, there were two or three people I meant to meet up with on a day that I couldn't. Obviously, not their fault at all. Not the organisers' fault, not the venue's fault. It's just crappy signal you tend to get in uh, a lot of these areas. Um, so that was a shame. They could have done with more food vendors, but they're already addressing that. They're going to be more next year. But yeah, all minor teething issues when you think about the amount of things they got right. No complaints from me whatsoever. That's my little review. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, by all means, leave me a like. Uh, you're more than welcome to subscribe if you, uh, you want to see more from me. Thank you very much once again. Take care. I'll see you all soon. Billy Red Viking, out.